He was definitely arguing with some body, something, someone. But there's nobody else in this entire area that you can that you can pick up on. I see. So I'll um I'll just head over to one of the uh areas wherever you like sit down uh sure. where you can uh, have a book, book or something and um do I see any books on the table right now or is it like perfectly clean nothing It's there? I mean you know after every night you'll put stuff away so there's nothing really out currently All right So let's see I think I'll um I can pretty pretty much like find where whatever it is I'm looking for, right? Because yeah, I've yeah. Been here I mean, before. yeah. You just you find you know some book that you've been reading off and on, and you grab it and sit down and you know start yeah. reading. There's some tables. Uh, you're so you're welcome to start reading. Um, yeah. So I'll want. just do that. I'll I'll pick up the latest book. Okay. I was reading. All right. Uh, back to you, Darth. Any. Any updates on where you're where you're gonna be? Um, I actually head to the library as well after having enjoyed oh, so my wait, so in the courtyard. You, you said that you, oh, you, so you go out, you went out to the courtyard to eat, right? Yeah, to the courtyard. Yeah, I so, sat in the grass. So you, you you go out to the courtyard and you start sitting in the grass and oh, you're okay. you're out there and you're you're eating your food and uh, off in the corner, kind of up by the stables, that's where six is. Uh, there's, a, there's a young like mage apprentice who's uh, who's who's like trying to trying to cast some sort of spell, and you know nobody and it's got a couple of people watching him, and um, you know it's working really really hard, and he's like he's, like reading through his book and trying to say every single word really you know perfectly, and he's holding out his hand, and this little flame starts to appear, and, you know, it forms, and then it and then it finishes his spell, and the spell, you know, all of a sudden this flame is in his hand, and, and everybody starts clapping, you know, it's, it seems like it's maybe his first spell that he's ever managed to fully, fully actually get out right here, and he's grinning, and he's grinning, and then he says another word, and suddenly his entire hand is on fire, and it starts running up his arm, and he's sort of waving his arm around, and they're all coming and trying to put him out, and but it's not going out, it's magical fire, and it just keeps on burning up his arm, and, and suddenly he just takes off running with his arm just on fire in the air, and kind of runs across the entire courtyard, uh, trying to find like a bucket of water to dunk his uh, hand in, and he runs off over uh, into like the uh, where three and four areas are. So a dinner and a show, huh? Uh, breakfast and a show, certainly. <laughs> just, <laughs> what the hell just happened? Um, so, so that was you know your what? I'm gonna experience. go. I'm gonna put down my food and start rushing after this guy. Sure. Um, I'm just. I'm running full sprint because I want to either try to put him out or help him after he's put it out to, you know, I I just want to know what how, how this went so horribly wrong, basically. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, he, he runs around the corner <clears throat> and you you throw your food down and you start sprinting after him. Uh, and as you turn a corner, it looks like he finally managed to find like a bucket. Um, it wasn't really water, it was more like pig slop, but he's managed to dunk his entire arm in there. <laughs> And the oh, fire has finally God. gone out um, as, it's, as it's completely drenched. And he you know, pulls his arm out and he's like, checking it and checking for burns. He's like, oh, that hurt. And then and he looks at you, you know, the only person who's really around. It's like, I did it. I did it. I, made, I cast a spell. I, I did it. And he's like, t complete elation finally coming up. Even doesn't even matter that his his entire uh, you know arm uh, not arm but the uh, the clothes on his arm are singed and you know tattered and now but he's just complete elation of being able to cast his first spells but looks like he's good but uh, that kid's definitely got a ways to go still. Uh, I asked him actually, uh, are, are you okay? I'm really happy that you managed to cast your spell, but do you need any healing or anything? Uh, well, now that you mention it, I should probably go see a nurse. And he'll, he'll saunter off. Um, kind of on the bottom level of the dormitories, there's a general nurse. It doesn't look like he'll need any uh, you know, magical healing or anything, but he'll probably want to keep some of these burns wrapped a little bit, You know, get some, get some aloe vera lotion on there. 
Yeah, I just walk off shaking my head. <laughs> he calls that a spell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this kid's like, you know, maybe 12, 13 years old, and he's... Holy shit, finally, really? Yeah, yeah, he's a really young <laughs> kid. 12, 13 years old? Oh my god. Just smacking with my tail. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have a tail, but I forgot to mention that in this room. I have a big muscular tail that I can also attack people with. Yep. Indeed. All right then. As I, what was that? What was that? What? Uh, anyways, after this incident goes off, uh, you said it was near three four, right? Uh yeah, around three four. So that's the. Um, yeah. That's the what Al corner. Alchemy Labs Armory that that general area. Yes. Yeah, I'll head to the library after that. I, I don't think I want to eat anymore after that. <laughs> I mean, I threw away my food. I don't sure, want sure. crack to catch me coming back for a second after that. Yeah, sure. Um, so you, you you dispose of your food uh, and you head over to the library. All right, Sigan, back to you. You've been reading for a little while. Uh, and suddenly, you know, you hear a door open at the library. Um, and in walks, uh, in walks the the lizard man, um, better known as Saj. You, I, I think you two have decided that you have, you know, being a little bit friendly with each other, at least acquainted with each yeah. other. Yeah, we've met and talked before, so. So I'm not that surprised to see him. So yeah, he'll, he'll come sauntering in. You guys have about <coughs> you know about a uh, 15 minutes or so before you need to. Uh, head over to the tower. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish and start making my way down to the courtyard. Sure. Are you Are you just going out to the tower immediately, or are you stopping yeah. anywhere first? Okay. Sounds good. So, so I've got my my shield and my sword and everything. Sure. sure. My own. Uh, yeah, I mean it did it did tell you bring your gear. Um, so you get over to the tower. Uh, there's a few people starting to congregate. Um, there's nobody official out yet, but uh, but you do recognize quite a lot of these people. Some of them have been your instructors in the past. Um, you know, people you've trained with, people have taught you how to you know do whatever it is you want to do. Um, and so it looks like whatever it is that you're going on, you are going to be in with some higher ups. Hmm. All right, Sigan and Darth. So, um, um, as he walks in, I kind of just look up from my book, and I greet him. Um, probably, yeah, yeah. Let's go with trying to pronounce his name actually, uh, so I get that wrong first time. I correct him as usual. Shach. 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 Yes. Well, good morning to your friend. Um, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> anything uh, unusual happened this morning? Nope. <laughs> well, um, there was this well, there was this one wizard. Okay, so he was playing around with some fire. He he was like twelve years old, and he set himself on fire. Basically, it was uh, it's pretty funny, but he seems to be okay now. So he was pretty happy about setting himself on fire. He felt that it was a great success, all things considered. Okay, um, I I have no idea. These wizards, man, they're freaking crazy. Yeah, I don't get I mean, I don't even know how they can cast those spells. I mean, they're just... They, do they even know what the spirits are? I don't... Yeah, no. well, numb nuts, huh? I'm just kidding. Uh, no, he seemed like a he seemed like a decent guy, but he, he's gonna be okay. Other than that, you know, I had some breakfast. Today, the bacon is especially good if you're still hungry. I think they got some. Wow. What are you up to? You know... I, I'm not really into bacon. Oh right, I forgot your special tastes. Yes. There's probably uh, some freshly butchered. <laughs> meat the I don't. You know, uh, I actually got my rations just. You got just yours, today, okay. So, um, but um, I got this note this morning. Uh, it was just slid under my door. Uh, it was actually some orders from from the higher ups in the camp, and uh, it told me to be at the the uh, courtyard. I think. Oh yeah, I, I just I had, take I up the letter again too. and study it. Does it say courtyard? Uh, no, it's the administration tower. I mean, it's kind of in the courtyard, but like specifically, you know, 
Assemble well, in front. I, I just hand hand him the uh, leather uh, letter, and um, I just ask if he he's familiar with it, or if he perhaps got a letter of his own. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen this before. I got one exactly like it. I was wondering about it, but uh, you know, it, uh, I wonder what it is. I've never gotten anything like this before, and it looks real. I mean, it has the seals. Yeah. That we expect. Yeah, so. Yeah. Really interested. Um, maybe we sh is it time for us to head out? What time were we expected yeah, to be there? Yeah, I mean, there? you can, you can. Yeah, it's it's probably it's time. probably time to get moseying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we should head over to Yeah, reckon it's about time. Yeah. See what they want yeah, from so, us. So, uh, Alistor and Shock heads out. Sure. So you guys, you guys will head out as well over to the administration tower. Um, yeah. You guys see, this, you know, the same thing that uh, Diff did. Is uh, you know, fair amount of people there. Uh, some of them have been your instructors in the past, as I've said, and uh, you know. Quite an important group of people. As you're milling about, um, uh, you three are really the only sort of like new students that you've seen there. Like everybody else who's there is is more or less of a veteran. You know, they're actually the guys to go out and take care of whatever it is that the the camp gets hired to do. So you're in high company, and you're pretty much the only newbies there. So eventually, um, as you're hanging out. Um, I don't know how much you guys have conversed with Diff himself, um, but you do also see him, so um, that's up to you if you want to talk to him or not. Uh, regardless... Yeah, I, I, I actually sure. try to talk to him okay. when I get the chance. Yeah, sure. You, you've got a few minutes if you want to. <laughs> if you guys want to make some idle chit-chat. Yeah, so mm. so he was just standing there as well. The, well uh... what, what were you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just standing there waiting for... For what, uh, what we're supposed to be here for. I asked, so, uh, like, hey, I asked Alistair, Alistair to introduce morning. me. I asked Alistair to introduce me because I've never met Dip. Oh, yeah, you haven't? Well, I don't uh, believe I have, no. I, I can probably be your wingman or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> I don't want to make so, out with him. Well, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll walk over to Dip. Uh, I, I've seen him before. I, I, I'm not very like familiar with him or anything like that. I've just seen him before, and I noticed that he, among me and Shock, is uh, the newbies, so to speak. Because I could, I could probably tell this, right? Yeah, yeah. So I kind of walk over to him and nudge him a bit on, uh, like, on the shoulder or something. And stand beside him, and I look at him. I'll be like, "Good morning." Good morning, Alistair. Uh, what brings you here uh, this fine morning? Did you also get one of the uh, letters? Yeah, I pull it. I pull it out of my belt, and I kind of show it to him. And I'm like, "Yeah, I got one of these two. Something big must be happening." I put it back in my belt. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of nervous and a anxious actually. I uh, haven't been in uh, on one one of these big assignments ever, so uh, it's gonna be quite quite interesting to see if my training pays off. And uh, I'll kind of look over at uh, Shock and like come here sort of thing with the head, you know. So oh, so cool. he's coming too. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Now, you know, I should note that, if, that even if you haven't met Sash, Sash, Shash before, uh, <laughs> you you know him. Like, it's kind of hard to miss the guy with the tail. Yeah. <clears throat> I still want to make a proper introduction. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, like, you're not completely unfamiliar because uh, yeah. if, you, if you were, you would have been basically had to be holed up in your room the entire time. <laughs> Oh, I'm Shaktibur. I'm Shaktibur Uks Bahamuti. Pleasure to meet you. I, I give him my tail. I give him my tail as a greeting. <laughs> you hold up your tail in front of him? No, I shake his hand. But it would be uh, pretty okay. funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> Let's make this awkward. We're just, we're just properly meeting. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> no, I shake his hand and I say, you know why we're here? Uh, all I know is this note that I got. Oh, I got the same thing. Should be interesting. Well. All right, just, so, uh, so, I mean, wait. you know, as you guys make your introductions, uh, the... Uh, tower door or opens. Uh, it's a fairly large tower. It's actually got several stories. Uh, tower door opens, big double doors. Director hangs. Pretty old guy, but you know him as both the both the the entire camp director and founder. Is like the you know head honcho and has always been the head honcho for however many decades, probably thirty, forty years now. Uh, but he, you know, that means he's also pretty old. He's uh, followed behind by uh, the assistant director, Jocelyn, who's a really sharp and cold-looking woman. She's very snappy. Um, she's, you know, kind of like the, she's kind of like the hall monitor, uh, you know, where, where if you're doing anything bad, she'll definitely let you know. Uh, but thankfully, she's in the tower most of the time, so any, you know, if you were doing something bad, <laughs> hopefully you weren't getting caught by her. Um, and so she'll step forward, like, "All right, gentlemen, you've been, been assembled here today. Uh, the town of uh, oh my god, what did I name this? <laughs> Sometimes I forget this stuff. The town Please. of Al uh, sorry, the town of Alastor has uh, has been reported." as being invaded by some group of something. We, we don't have really have too much information currently. Um, many of the townsfolk have fled, and uh, are, there's varying reports of 10-foot monsters breathing fire and little 3-foot midgets running around spreading chaos. We don't really know exactly what's going on. We can't really trust townsfolk like that. Um, so, uh, you are all assembled here. You will be sent out to this town. Uh, your mission will be to, uh, investigate whatever the cause of this invasion is and, uh, see, uh, whatever, you know, if there's anybody left alive, just try to get a general information about the town. Uh, most of you know your groups already. Uh, Shock, Alastor, Diff. Uh, you are, you three, uh, you will be assigned to Commander Vark. Uh, Vark will be your, uh, commander for this mission. Uh, listen to him, follow his orders. Uh, the commander carts, the, car, the carts are out in front. Uh, you will leave in approximately 15 minutes. I hope you all have your stuff with you. Good luck, gentlemen, and, uh, we will see you back here, uh, whenever you get back. I salute after the speech. And Harang kind of nods at everyone and will turn back and both of them close the doors and uh, head back into the building. Um, so Vark is uh, Vark is definitely one of the veterans. Uh, he's um, more of a fighter type, so I think last year you probably had the most interaction with him. Uh, he's got a large scar on his forehead uh, and he's been through a lot of battles. Uh, it's mostly retired, so it's kind of interesting that he's getting sent along on this mission as it is. Uh, but, you know, he's sort of a gruff guy, but at the same time, like, he kind of cares. Like, you know, he, he wants to see all the young ones do well, so, you know, it's like begrudgingly soft. Um, love. So yeah. I, I did want to point out that you named the town the exact did I? name <laughs> as... <laughs> okay. Cl clear and lean. Well, for me, come on. Okay, hold on. I th <laughs> I think I may have written something wrong down here. Commander Bark. Commander Vark. V a r k. -K. No, no, no. Bark. Wow. I I must have had something on my mind when I wrote that down because it is what I wrote down. Me, obviously. <laughs> Apparently. All right. Uh, let's rename this town then. This town will be named. We'll name it Blackbriar. Yeah. All of you. Okay. Black, we'll name it Blackbriar. All right. Nice. Huh? 
I don't know why I said it last turn. It's weird. Okay. <laughs> so you're you're going to Black Bear. All right. Um, so uh, Vark will usher you guys out into the road, uh, down through the gates. Um, you've got a. <laughs> I like how somebody wrote Vark on the map. I don't know which one of you did that, but I didn't. So you can you can, so you can see it. If somebody. It's did. green, so it's dip. <laughs> That's, there we go. That's great. Thanks, guys. That's wonderful. Yeah, hey, I just wanted a reminder. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, uh, all right. So you guys are ushered to your wagon. There's a. Uh, there's about. I think there's four. Yeah, there's four covered wagons standing outside here. Uh, each of them have a few members getting inside. Mark will usher you into the back of it, and he'll sit up front. Um, there's also a, a driver for each of these coaches, so uh, you guys take off. Now, as you're going along, Vark will turn back uh, and address all of you all right, saying, all right, uh, this will be the first live combat you guys have really, really have faced uh, as long as since you have been with us and training with us. Um, you will have to work together as a group. I don't know how well you know each other. But uh, I suggest right now is the time where you three should talk out uh, what your strengths, weaknesses are, how you can cover each, uh, each other, uh, and just get to know uh, really what each of you can do in combat. Uh, it will be several hours before we arrive at Black Byers, so uh, you have plenty of time to do so. And I'll turn around. And sir, yes, back on sir. The road. <clears throat> so now so we be, have now would be the time to to introduce what classes you all are and so on and so forth. So hmm. who wants to start? I'll go we'll first. Start with the dragon, yeah. So I. Hey, by the uh, way, it, with your tail, it's kind of hard to sit in this wagon. Like, you're trying to like put it to your side and maybe hang out the 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 back, and it's just. You're having a hard time sitting. <laughs> oh, we're sitting in the wagon. wagon. Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, I thought, you're sitting I thought on... we had like horses. No, no, no. You're you're in a wagon. You guys, there's benches on the side, but nobody really thought to make a wagon for a guy with a tail. I'd say I'm used to it, but I'm probably not. Actually, I'm pretty young. Probably, enough, yeah. All dragons considered. So, uh, so I, you're so I'm a, a dragon. Bit of an issue, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, a, dragon I'm a dragonborn, but which. Uh, makes me suitable for a bunch of classes, but uh, I chose to choose a class that is close to nature and the uh, spirits in the shaman class. And uh, so for you guys, that means that I will be doing most of the healing, and I can also provide some neat tricks. I can cast obscure mist in places where not even a brown elf could find it. It's it, it's gonna be magical, and uh, I can also do some combat stuff. As you can see, I have my trusty glaive here, uh, which allows me to stand back behind you guys and try and uh, get some damage in. And I also have this tail here, which gotta say, I'm not comfortable sitting here right now. But it'll cut. You'll you'll come to appreciate the tail once we get in combat. Oh, and also, you guys ever fought a dragon or heard of them? Ask the two men sitting with me. Uh, I've read about dragons before. I've never seen I've one read about person them as well. Yes, I do have what they call a breath weapon. So once every couple minutes, I'll be able to assault our enemies with a breath of cold. And also, in case you haven't met him, and a small dragon flaps into the wagon. This is Osir. My pet dragon. He's a, he's a really small dragon. He's about eagle size. He's, and, he's uh, basically a wormling. He's based on wormling, yes. Yeah. yeah, more of a whelp. More of when a, he calls him a whelp, I slap him. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I've met this, so this creature before. This is my, uh, my dearest friend, Asir. He's a, a small wormling. For the, he's a pure white. For those wondering, he's a, he's a chromatic dragon, but he's not as feral as most. He's not as vicious as most white dragons are and not quite as stupid but he can't speak. Uh, so 
Yeah, this, this is my friend. He'll be helping us out. Uh, if you need any scouting, just let me know and he'll fly up ahead and uh, tell me what he saw. But yeah, what are you guys good at? Again? So, yeah, let's go with uh, Dip first. Oh, okay. Uh, my my class is a little bit of a homebrew. Uh, it's, it's, the Grey Guard is technically a prestige class in 3.5, but we kind of modified it to take the uh, place of the Paladin. Uh, the Grey Guard gives you a bit of more of a uh, of leniency. Uh, you still can, you know, like slaughter innocence, things like that, but uh, you do have a little bit more of a wiggle room, and you're more easily able to atone for, for various things. Um, I've got uh, a light shield and an elven thin blade. This is a cross between a long sword and a rapier. Very, very agile weapon. So, as you tell us, like basically that you're a grey guard and whatnot, uh, I ask if you can do magic. Not yet. I'm learning. He's, if I can he's, see he's, the sword. he's praying heavily to be able to <laughs> to be Sorry, to be able to cast some spells. Communing daily. <laughs> Ask if I can see your uh, your sword, because I have a keen interest in the elven things. I sure I I hand it to him. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Is it a, is it a well made sword? I compliment him on it, <laughs> no, even if it's bad. <laughs> No, yeah. I mean it's it's a it's an it's it's an exotic weapon, so you haven't really seen anything like it. Um, it looks kind of weird because it look, kind of does look like a rapier, but at the same time, it looks like a longsword. So it is a little bit strange, um, but yeah. I wouldn't have seen it even growing up in Elven lands. Um, I, I guess you may have seen it. Uh, how much you recall from mm -hmm. that life is another question. Yeah, it was a gift from my father. Okay. Oh, all right. So it's lovely. After these two lovebirds has uh, stopped with the <laughs> chattering, I uh, introduce myself as a fighter, pure and true. Uh, I don't tell them anything else because uh, they'll figure stuff out either by me telling them at a later date or they already know. Sure. And, and I just tell them. That you should put me at the front lines and none shall pass. And I'm using two weapons uh, one bastard sword in my one hand and a short sword in my other. And uh, another thing you might notice is another sword I have on my back. Uh, it looks pretty weird, actually. And uh, a lot you of. You use it with your mouth? No. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people have asked me about the sword uh, when I've been in the camp, and basically what everyone knows is that I never use it for battle, and uh, I basically call it uh, the will of my father, because it used to be my father's sword. And uh, I also have a bow on my back, but I'm more used to fighting with blades, so I rarely use that. Okay. okay. What kind of what kind of a bow is it? Is it a big one or a, or a short no, bow? No, a short bow. Just a simple short bow. Are you poor? <laughs> no, I, like, like I said, I... most most of the uh, most of the equipment that you guys have, and I think you on your character list, you've also written down like an assortment of other traveling stuff. I don't know if, how much of that is with you, uh, but most of this stuff is provided by the camp, as long as you know it's. Pretty simple stuff. Now, the Elven Thin Blade, for example, is definitely an heirloom. So you know that's something that Diff had with himself. But you know, probably his armor is from the camp, um, as well as mostly all of yours. Oh, and I, I actually have a longbow that is attached to my that is on my back and is also attached to my belt, the lanyard. So I, I'll never drop it. That is a nice bow. That, that's good, not to drop bows. Yeah. <laughs> Especially not when you're flying on griffins. <sighs> well, I also carry some javelins on my person, just in case I need to throw stuff. Okay. Well, uh, I guess, you know, um, yeah. 
Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to say to each other, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we will keep on going. Oh, yeah. I, I have a scarf as well. I also have a scarf. <laughs> I, had a, I had a scarf before he had a scarf. <laughs> sure he did. We're going sure to fight about clothing. That's what's going to happen here. My scarf is blue. All right, I think we I think we're getting on the road. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're on the you're on the road. The wagon's been bouncing uh, bouncing yeah. around for a while. Uh, you've Mine's red. done a little bit of introductions. You've gotten a general sense of what you can all do, which you pretty much all knew already because we've talked about it in the past. But I definitely wanted to let uh, people know on stream at least <laughs> uh, what you guys are, and of course now you're stats there are displayed as well um we've been going for about an hour did you guys want to keep on going do you want to take a small break oh we can keep going cool we're getting I into it going. all right sounds good so uh you know the ride is fairly you know long and after a while you guys don't really have much to talk about uh so you fall into silence um and eventually you start seeing kind of the outcrops of a town uh, do any of you have knowledge local? I do. I do. Uh, go ahead and make a couple of rolls. So you had so, D twenty plus your knowledge local, uh, which is one for me. Eight. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay, so uh, Alaster, huh, that didn't show up here. Uh, whatever. Um. I think I have this up too high. Uh, Alastair, you can't really recall too much of anything. Uh, uh, you know, you're just not able to recall much about uh, Black Bri Blackbriar. Um, Diff, however, you sort of know this general area. You know that they're uh, fairly, really the thing that they're best known for is actually the brandy that they make. Uh, it's supposed to be a fairly high quality. Um, it's a town of a couple of hundred, so you know it's it's fairly sizable, but not super big, of course. Um, other otherwise, there's not a whole lot of information that you can really recall. You don't know, you don't remember anything specific. Um, all right. This so place has some really good brandy. <laughs> we should try to find some. <laughs> I glare at him at, as he said that. I just glare at him and I say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, as you approach the town's edge, uh, what will actually happen is the wagons that have been following each other, uh, one of them will split off towards uh, towards kind of each direction. So you've got four wagons that were going. They're all kind of starting to circle around uh, the edge of the town. Um, you got your wagon will go off to as you're coming in the road, which is coming from the south. So you guys will come around on the right. Um, so you guys are heading uh, east, uh, and eventually it will stop and uh, bark. You know, back you guys out of the wagon. Like, all right, gentlemen. Uh, so uh, what's the uh the general scene of the town, like, do we see smoke and debris? So, you don't, it's actually really quiet. Uh, you don't, nothing is on, actively on fire, but you don't, you also don't really see anything at all. Like, it's midday about, but there's nobody in town. Like, it's just, it's almost, it, it's basically been deserted. Now, you, uh, as, as I'm about to say, and so Vark tells, tells you, okay, so uh, most of the townsfolk here, have left uh, as soon as whatever whatever or group came in here uh, a lot of them fled uh, eventually all of them got out um, you know there's all sorts of tales of weird things walking about but we don't really have an accurate count of how many who they are what they're here for uh, this started about a day and a half ago um, so we don't even know if there's any sort of people or anything still here uh, so it, it will be our uh, job to investigate as much of the town as we possibly can we split it off in the quadrants we're going to be taking care of the northeast quadrant of this town um, this will be your operation I will be watching I will follow behind uh, but I need to see how you three 
will function as a group if need be. I, I, I will help, but this is your operation. This, think of this as a final exam. This is the determination of whether or not you will be promoted to active duty. So we're we're pretty much standing in front of the area that we're going into. Yeah, so there's a road going in, smaller road uh, going into town, um, and it'll show you a quick map of it. You know, it's cut off, cut up into quarters, and you've got you know a large area um, to cover. But because nobody really knows what's going on, you don't have a clear cut objective. So, so I'm basically going... it's head into town. So I'm going to right in front of us, like kind of into the area, I'm going to cast uh detect You're gonna do what? I'm gonna cast detect evil. Sure. Now how how big is the radius of detect evil? It's uh, a cone out for me out. Sixty feet. Okay. This guy said he couldn't do magic. Sixty feet. Okay. All right. So uh, you cast detect evil, but in this sixty feet cone, no, nothing registers. I just look well, at everybody exactly does that, and I'm like, what? what uh, so doing? you're you're kind of like on the outskirts of town. Um, there's you know some houses. Uh, it looks like a sort of m mostly residential area. Uh, you know, you, you might see like a grocery stall a little bit down a street that's being abandoned. But other than that, uh, it's a fairly wide street that you're looking in on. Um, but uh, the line that you can see in, there's nobody there. Uh, it's bright, sunny. There are birds singing, but there's a complete lack of town noise that you would usually expect. 